up YouTube. This is the second video in my No to Pro series and today we're going to be talking about the Power Query Editor. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the different areas or sections within inside of the Power Query Editor just so you have an understanding of where to navigate as we progress through this series. If you want to follow along there's a link down below to download a PBIX file where last time we saved the steps with inside of the Power Query, which was simply just bringing in the tables. But now this gives us a chance to go back inside the Power Query editor without those changes being applied. So if you want to follow along, the link to download the file is down below. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in the Power BI desktop, and when you load the Node to Pro file, the PBIX file, you're going to see that you're gonna get this little warning here that there are pending changes in your queries that haven't been applied. Anytime you save your changes from within inside of the Power Query Editor, but do not load them into the desktop, you're gonna get this warning. But once again, like we talked about in the last video, to get to the Power Query Editor, we're simply gonna choose the Transform Data button from here at the top. So let's go ahead and select Transform Data. So this is going to open up the Power Query Editor. Once again, this is a separate window. And this is just the Excel files from the worldwide import that we brought in. So I'm going to give a general layout of the land. It's going to be a relatively shorter video, just so as we progress through the series, everyone is on the same page. So here at the top of the screen, we have our tabs. So our home tab, our transform tab, add column, view tools, and our help. Right below our tab, we have our ribbon. So the ribbon holds all the different UI or user interface buttons that we can interact with with inside of the Power Query Editor. Now, one thing to note is over on the left-hand side, you'll see that we have what's known as queries. A query is the same thing as a table. And so inside the Power Query Editor, they're going to be named queries, but a query is just a table. So just understand that notation here. You can also see the iconography or the icon representing a table here as well. Now, one of the most important pieces of the Power Query Editor is on the right hand side. This is known as the applied steps section and this is located with inside of the query settings pane. So with inside the query settings pane on the right hand side you can see the applied steps. So let's talk about why this is important. So inside the Power Query Editor there is no undo button or redo button. If you make a mistake the only way to change it is through this applied step section, which is why it's so important. I also like to call this my time machine because we can kind of go back in time and see how the data progressed throughout the different transformations. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have three steps. And once again, all we did was bring in our data. Notice we have three different steps here, change type, navigation, and our source step. So if we go back to our source, notice this is going to give us where our data came from. So all the different dimensions here, all the different tables that we had available with inside of that Excel file. That's our source. Step number two was the navigation step where we chose the table that we wanted to bring in. In this case, it was the stock item. Now, anytime you see a gear icon in the applied step section, this means that this step can be modified if you want to. So by clicking on the gear icon, it will allow you to modify the step and I could choose a different table if I wanted to. Notice the option here to choose a different table. The next step is the change type step. So by default, Power BI is going to, and Power Query Editor is going to try to do a lot for you. One of the things that it tries to do is data type the columns. Notice here at the top, the data type is ABC123. This is the wild, wild west of data types. So this could be a number, this could be a text, it could be anything. It is best practice to make sure that you data type your columns with the correct value. Now, notice when I go to the change type step, it is now converted 
this column into a text column. Now you can change this by selecting the data type here at the top of the column and you'll have an option to change the data type if you wish to do so. So once again, the three main areas that we were gonna be concerned with inside the Power Query Editor, we have our tabs here at the top so we can add columns, transform our columns, and we'll get into that in the later videos. We have our queries pane over here on the left-hand side. This is gonna hold all of our tables. And then we have our query settings pane over here on the right hand side now one thing i want to talk about is what happens if you accidentally close the query settings pane how do you get the applied steps back well to do that you're going to go up to the top and you're going to select your view tab and you'll see the query settings ui button here on the left hand side if you select that that will then bring back your applied steps over on the right hand side. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me in this video. Once again, I know it's a shorter video. I'm going to try to keep them um, in smaller sections just so it's easier to digest. In the next video, we're going to start some of the basic transformations with inside of the Power Query Editor. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.